Hi friends and welcome to episode 59 of Linen Knits, my podcast about knitting and yarn and related things. I'm Melina and I'm coming to you from my home in Helsinki, Finland. I've got my cup of tea, white tea. Um, I've got whips all around me, some finished objects as well. What I thought I would do the same is sort of a catch up, take stock episode. So I'm going to show you what I've knitted since the last episode, which was in June. And today is September, or is it early July? Well, today is September the 5th. Um, so it's been a while and there's quite a lot to show, which I'm happy about. Just for a while there, I felt like I wasn't doing much knitting beside my designs. And um, in addition to showing uh, my progress, I thought I would actually go through what's in my weight basket in addition to the items that I've been working on. Um, over the summer, I've increasingly become incre interested in simplifying things. And I know this sort of sounds like a recurring theme that I go through this phase of wanting to simplify things and then making a big mess of things or the mess of the organization that I've achieved. So, but anyway, that's again the situation or, um, I'm at. So, um, I wanna show the existing whips for two reasons, the other existing whips for two reasons. One, so that I can decide whether to work on them or defrog them. And um, also because if I do decide to work on them, there will be something that will be featured in the coming episodes, I hope. So you'll know um, where I um, continued on them from. I shouldn't say started because they were started a long time ago. Anyway, so there's a lot to go through. So um, I suggest you get a cup of something as well. Maybe grab a whip to, to knit on. All right, so first things first. I did finish my linen top this summer. I haven't worn it yet, but I did finish it. And I'm going on holiday to Italy um, at the end of this month. So I think I will pack this with me and wear there. It's gotten a bit wrinkled while it was, uh, while it's been in my uh, wardrobe. So this is knit out of BC Garns Leno. I think I used four skeins. I had one left over. And the pattern is Zenone by Andy Sutherland. And I did the version that had lace only partial way down the back and that's full length. Although I think I didn't knit it exactly as long as the pattern stated. So I made a sort of a uh, midway version between the cropped and the full length version. Um, when I was knitting this, I was worried that it would be like way too wide. But once I blocked this, um, the pattern did say to put it in the washing machine um, several for several cycles. But um, for the life of me, I cannot remember if I put this in the washing machine or if I just sewed it and blocked it. I'm sorry, I've completely blacked out on that, um, on what I did. But anyways, once it was wet, I blocked it and quite aggressively stretched, first of all, um, to open up the lace. Oh, sorry, I just had to check that it was recording because um, I just did a weird thing. Um, so I aggressively blocked to open up the lace and also to bring some length and take away from the width. And I have to say that I'm really happy with this. Um, if I was wearing this, you'd see that this is like the perfect size for me. It's not too 
tight, uh, tight by any means, not too snug, but it's not too loose. Um, the neckline is, is quite wide, um, but it's fine. Um, it's a summer top and I'll, I'm of course going to be wearing something underneath it. So there's no, um, I don't have to worry about it revealing too much if, uh, when I'm moving. So yes, really um, positively pleased with uh, my first knitted, hand knit linen garment. Um, just need to wear it. <laughs> um, yes, so I did have my own design feature here where the neckline I needed to do a little twisty, knotty type thing there. Because when I joined the front and back pieces to working around, I accidentally twisted the stitches and only noticed that several rows or rounds down. But yes, um, once I put the I-cord neckline edging, it, it looks really neat. So that's that. Now I don't have to fear knitting with linen. I actually quite enjoy it in the end, but definitely a summer yarn to work with. I don't think I'd enjoy it that much during the height of winter. Um, yes, let's take a sip of tea. And the other thing you've seen several times on the podcast that's finally finished is this pair of socks. And I've got another pair of socks to show you, and one of them is on the blogger, so just have to do with one timely sock. So these are just plain vanilla socks with uh, fish lips kiss heel. And I knit this with tail and tendril yarn. It was a twin set of 50 gram skeins. One was Lumos, the yellow based yarn, and the other one was Knox, the gray based yarn. And I just switched the skeins around, the color colorways around for the other sock. So yes, finally done. Really happy with them. And uh, they're blocked and ready to wear. So um, there's one more semi-FO. I still need to weave in ends, but otherwise this is done. So this is the other pair of socks. Um, this is, I need these for my grandmother. There was no pattern and just cast on and started knitting and um, this is what came out. Came out. <laughs> um, my grandmother has borrowed my socks uh, previously so I know that her foot is about the same size as mine. So I knit the socks as I would for myself. The colorway or the yarn is Lenny Tum X Makina's basic sock, I think it was the basic sock, um, in um, a club colorway from years ago. I think it was the Firefly Yarn Cup and the yarn is called Jane is not a girl's name. If you've seen Firefly you know what it means, if not it doesn't matter. Anyway it's not available anymore so I um, won't go into too much detail about that. But yes, so um, I picked the yarn based on what I thought would be sort of color scheme that my grandmother might like. And once I picked this semi-busy yarn, well it's quite busy, I knew I wanted something simple. So this is it. So it's got these sort of rib columns going, going on the surface. Yes, I'm seeing my grandmother this weekend and I'm giving them to her then. So you just need to make a weave in the ends, but they're blocked. So otherwise, ready, ready. And this knit up pretty quickly, I think. Um, three or four evenings and um, I was done. Alright, so then the whip that's 
well actually I've got two whips there that, that I need to do oh well this one does need a bit of knitting so never mind what I was about to say um, so this is my other summer knit it's the striped cotton top that's also been folded up for too long um, and th these have also been blocked well I didn't really aggressively block them just to even out the, the surface so what I need to do for this is to sew up the side seams since it's just like a rectangle like this I need to sew up the side seams and then knit um, a bit of an edging for the the sleeve caps or what do you call them sleeve caps I think yeah so that that's what I need to do I've already um, woven in all the ends you can see this is the wrong side so um, let me first show you what it's supposed to look like so this is from Pom Pom summer issue issue um, 25 and this is the pattern it's Nasreen by Lan and Joyce and this also had two versions this is the long one and the one that I have on the photo is the long one and I knit the cropped one and I didn't use the yarn specified it called for Quince and Co Willet but I couldn't find a European source for that yarn so I went with Nurturing Fibers Eco Cotton uh, it's a DK weight yarn with similar yardage but of course it didn't end up working similarly my colors were mist and watershed mist being the white one and watershed the blue so I got the amount of yarn I thought I would need but I completely ran out of the blue one so I haven't yet decided which one is the front and which one is the back but this is like a net as um, set in the pattern and for this one I had to do this bit entirely in the contrasting color in the white yarn so that I would have enough yarn for the top rib and the top rib on both pieces is a few rows shorter than what's in the pattern I don't mind I really don't and I think my gauge is actually a bit bigger than in the pattern but so that would explain it but still so it's sort of done I just really need to get my act together and actually finish finish it I think it's just because it's already September well I did finish knitting this sometime in August but I sort of knew I wouldn't be wearing it so I could take this one to Italy as well right so I think I'll leave this out somewhere so that I see it and then I'm annoyed at myself and actually finish it <laughs> that sometimes works and other times it just makes me feel really grubby right so then the other Thing. this one you haven't seen before and this is like almost almost finished but this hasn't sat anywhere for a long time because I just finished it um, this morning or got to this point this morning now this is a hat it's the pattern is called Halla and it's by Jonna Hedela and I just fell in love with the hat the minute I saw it and once um, I had the pattern I just had to cast on so this is going to be a super warm hat once it's folded um, for this one I picked um, all sort of audience well I did have a skein of Suri Alpaca by Corn Studios I think so I used that one as one of the colors in, in this one and then um, these fingering weight yarn so this is Hedgelick Fibers teacup this I believe is Tuscan Knit Spray in Love Struck Baby I designed yes this is a I designed a pair of mitts out of it so I used the rest for this and then this I cannot remember what it was 
but this is all I have left of the it's sock yarn anyway I know that much so yeah so um, I'll show this better once I've actually done the finishing details on it and I can maybe put it on my head but it's just fluffy as a cloud and almost making me wish it was snowing so that I could wear it that's already that's already so much that I've done that it's not all of it well this felt to the brim back holds my crochet project um, this is the um, seed cushion cover thingy that I net, uh, crocheted one of these already and then this is more than halfway done but not so I'm gonna double it up so I do still need a bit more to get it into a square shape so this is for pretty much everything else but my fingering weight scraps so the whole bag is just filled with them and I keep finding more now that I'm going through my stash so I keep finding more like I added these from my um, winter sole yoke and uh, yeah so um, I am gonna do these I can do four of these easily there's three in my family and then one for a guest in case we're sitting outside with guests so I'm just gonna keep doing these I think at some point I'm gonna have to stop for a while and um, wait for more scraps to appear but at least I'm gonna finish the second one then oh it's it's not here no it is never mind because I do have that granny stripe blanket that's pretty much the same thing except it's just with fingering weight yarn hold a single like here I'm holding triple lace DK and sport at the moment so um yeah so I think after I finish this one I'm gonna crochet a bit on that yeah so this <laughs> I should put this into a bigger bag so I just keep adding the all the scraps that I find in the bag as well then there's one more thing that I've worked on and that is my confetti sweater by Vera Valimäki here, this one I've actually got a progress keeper on. So this is where I was when I last showed it on the podcast. I don't remember when that was, but that's where I was then. And this is what I've knit since. So let me see if I can hold this the right way up. Oop. Like this. So I'm knitting on the body, I think. Um, I'm gonna do like two or three more of these stripes and then start the rib and then I need to knit the sleeves the sleeves were not full length in the pattern I'm gonna see how much yarn I have and just go with that so for this one here are what I have of the yarn I've just um, started the third and last skein of my main color the blue one and um, no, I only had two of those, yeah, so the second and last. And then this is the one skein of contrast color that I have left. So the main color is, it's not this one. Where is it? It is, yeah. So the main color is by Porsche Yarn. And it is there. All right, so it's not wanting to focus now, but it's the Esme sock base uh, colorway ringed with the other world he stands. It has 440 yarns, uh, 400 meters in the 100 gram skin, and it's 100% merino. And the contrast color is Little Knit Fibers Polka. Now it's focusing nicely. And the colorway diamond. This is also 100% um, 
merino yarn, uh, superwash merino. Um, the sim yard is a similar, no it's not, it, it has 400 yards, so 366 meters. So this is my um, patriotic sweater, I mean blue and white stripes for Finland. I think I'd really like to get this finished because it would be perfect for early autumn being a fingering weight sweater. So this is definitely going to be worked on in the near future. All right, so about what else? What else do I have in my pretty basket? And the overflow bag. Well, let's have a look. And this one, I have one of my crochet projects. I always start crochet projects and then I don't finish it. Finish them. So this is the Kalevala blanket thing that you knit different squares on. This was a year, it, it wasn't a year long, but it was like a knit along for uh, for for last autumn and early winter up to December. I think it was like September to December. So you got a square every 10 days or so. And I kept up with it for a bit, but then I just, I'm like I said I like I've said before I'm not an experienced crocheter so these were really slow for me to work so I just guess I got burned out but I've got oh one hope you see and I've locked these that I've finished so one two just gonna quickly show them three four five or oh, which way this way sorry Five. I think this is my favorite. Six, seven, eight, eight squares ready. Ninth almost ready, but just look at that. That's just way advanced. <laughs> so, um, I can't remember how many squares there were, but I think I'm like one third done something like that so what I have here is I first started with the blue yarn that I used up these are all DK weight here um, and I'm working through this one and oh on this one yeah so I've got two of those so one of them I think these two are by Neat Love Flair in, an, in the base called Ahti. It's 100% wool, but I don't think that, that she has this base anymore. And then the blue one that I already used up is by Tricottery. It's the DK Merino Superwash in the Bad Wolf colorway. I know this isn't, but that's not for this. Sorry. So, um, so I've got these blue based colors that I'm going to be using. Those that I have in here will see me through a couple more blocks. But then I've got the rest of the yarn already sort of put aside. So I've got one skin of the Onyx colorway of the um, Madeleine Tosh uh, twist. DK or something like that that was left over from a cardigan I did a while back and then I've got three skeins of this sort of natural colored DK weight yarn this is by the natural dye studio that's no longer in business that's their primavera DK in Elkanet 1 so I put these aside to use on this one. So four skeins of DK plus that one. I should have these should be enough to finish all the squares 
needed. But yes, yeah, so I've got those aside just so that I don't use them on anything else. And then this bag also holds uh, the granny stripe blanket I mentioned a while back. Let me just, I haven't touched this since I last showed it to you, I believe. Gosh, it won't stay up, so go down. Oh, I don't know where the hook from this project has gone to, but this is it. So this, um, I know most people are doing this as like a bedspread, but this is more like a lap, taking a nap sized uh, blanket. And I'm not using scraps for this. So it's a scrap yarn blanket with no scraps. It's a granny stripe blanket. I should call it that and not a scrap yarn blanket. So a granny stripe blanket. And what I'm using for this is just uh, single skeins in my stash that um, I felt like I couldn't figure out any other project to do them on. So I'm not gonna hold them all up, but they're mostly like really busy colors and then I'm just pairing them with with more solid colors I might have had a plan for the color distribution I'm, I'm sure it did actually now I'm not sure if this is when I last showed it to you if I have moved it up but anyway so I need to figure out what to do with this. I'm sort of, right now that I'm looking at it and all the yarns, I'm really sort of indecisive. Like, I love it, but then, I don't know. Well, I wouldn't really know what to do with the yarns. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep going, see what it, what, what the end result is. We do need some blankets. So it just it's got a whole bunch of yarns. So they're all in here. So pretty much this whole bag is filled with yarn that I meant to crochet. But like I said, I'm going to do that um, C cover first and then move on to the granny straight blanket. I think I should sort of do some short, sort of a timeline for the Kalevala a blanket squares. But I don't know. I am all about finding joy in every stitch. And if I don't feel like working on something, there's not really much joy coming from it, is there? There's still more. I know it's in this one and it's actually quite embarrassing because it was the same way last summer when I did the same sort of going through my wood basket. So it's this birdie project that I have. So these are all these these are the bluebirds of happiness, a bluebird of happiness pattern, the spring revelry. So these are all knit out of my hand spun yarn. Um, I hope that my current spinning is more even than what these are, but I just wanted to save all of these, these tiny samples that I got of different wools and um, uh, spun to practice. So I wanted to use those yarns as well. So I started knitting them into these bluebirds of happiness. And I've got four completely finished. Then apparently I've got two, one tiny one and um, a bigger one that knit filling. And I've got two more samples spun up that need to be knit to, into the birds. So they'll total eight birds, although I'm not sure if I'm gonna include this one. So what I'm gonna do with the birds eventually is make a sort of a hanging garland with them so just put them on top of each other like this 
hanging nicely somewhere. So this is really truly embarrassing. I think it would be like two evening smacks to knit these birds and then one evening for the assembly and it would be done and it's been over a year since I've done anything like this oh my gosh just hold me accountable and make me do it make me finish this I already know I'm gonna hang it I'm gonna hang it so I just need to do it and there's one more basket I'm not or one more bag in my basket I'm not sure what's in oh I see so this is from last December that's my advent calendar scrap knee-high socks so one is done the second one is barely started and I've got all of these scraps and I wanted to sort of do them in the order that they came in but they're a pile well I can always go back and look at my blocks to see what came from what day but um, yeah this is embarrassing as well like a Christmas fail is there anything worse than a Christmas fail yeah uh, I like scrappy knee-high socks they're really cozy I think so just really need to get my act together with these whips so that's it I've gone through everything like a complete whip audit You've seen everything, all the embarrassingly long projects that I've had going on and uh, a whole bunch of the new ones as well. So this is it. I really, I think I, I'd like to do this like a yearly thing, sort of always sometime around the summer to go through all my whips and I really do not want to see any of these. Well, okay. Maybe the crochet thing won't be finished, but any of the knitted items should not be in there next year. I really want to get them done like by the end of this year. Because what I also did is I listed all of the projects that I've had at the back of my mind that I want to do this, whether it's a certain pattern that I want to knit or like a need that I have like that. Where's that weight? cardigan that I've been talking about forever so listing all of those including like socks for my son and everything so I listed all of those out I thought I wouldn't have that many that I wanted to do but it turns out I do so um, but I just really don't feel I really want to start them but I don't feel comfortable starting them before um, I've emptied out my needles in my basket I just want to have something like the feel of accomplishment I guess um, yeah so life is really busy and I just uh, with everything I think and I just I feel like I don't have that much time for like my free time knitting or any other crafting for that matter um, so it's um, Seeing the progress is slow, especially if you have as many whips as I do. So you really just need to narrow them down so as not to feel like I'm not getting anything done when I actually am, but it's just spread over 10 projects. Um, so it appears to be really slow. Well, the progress and individual projects is slow, but the amount of um, knitting that I do might not be as little as I think it is. So just to sort of um, find my happy spot and I think I just talk about this all the time but I'm well it's not easy to find the happy spot I guess that's that's the lesson in here it's, it, it takes work and finding a good variety of projects so after all of that like all of these that I need to net and all of my wants and needs listed um, this pops in my mailbox the latest issue of pom-pom this is the moon issue 
the shade 26 and this is utterly gorgeous but I mean just look at that sweater on the cover I think I need to do that and I have yarn I have sort of dark blue yarn and I have a golden color yarn so I would have what I need to do this but this is I but this is like pretty time consuming so definitely need to empty those needles before starting this I think that's enough for um, this episode thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it um, hit subscribe hit thumbs up um, leave a comment down below and do keep me accountable with uh, finishing <laughs> what I've started and see you soon again thank you bye